now. All right. So for those of you who are not familiar with Jen and for new coaches, Jen Greenberg has been a coach for about five years now, Jen. She'll tell you whenever she talks, but she has had great success. And not only that, she's extremely, extremely humble. She has a great story. And she is 33 years old and has, she's been inducted into the Million Club this year. For those of you who don't know what that is, that's, uh, she's reached a cumulative of a million dollars with her business. She also is a nine star diamond coach. And that's just in her first business center. I think she may be more than that now. And she's also a success club 10 all star legend, which means she has helped always at least five people get started on their new people get started on their health and fitness journey for at the past two years. But I know it's been more than the two years. It's been, I'm sure it's been six, more succeeding months than 48. So she has a lot. Um, the first time I heard Jen talk was when I went to my first coach summit. So it was like, I was six or seven months in as a coach. And I remember the first time I heard her talk that was, it was on stage at Lindsay Matway, my coaches, um, big summit training. She does a big, she did a bit of training because that was the year she was top coach. And Jen was on stage at that training. And it was such a big deal because Jen was talking about like building confidence as a coach because she was very shy. And it was, I was like, wow, like she was so inspiring to me. So it's really cool. Just like how full, things come full circle. She's a three-time elite coach. So she's going to share um, a little bit with you guys about how you can be a uh, not so much, you know, that you hear all these stories about like this, people have such great success in this short span of time, so to speak. So she's going to talk to you a little bit about that tonight. All right. Awesome. I didn't even know that you were at that event. And it's so funny to me when I hear people bring up that shine event because like it was so different back then. Like Bombshell Dynasty was like a hundred people. <laughs> And, but anyways, I'm so excited to, you know, to talk to you guys tonight. And I was really um, excited for the opportunity. And also like Megan was able to come and share on my team's call earlier this week. And it's always just cool. And I love that about like our team culture and everything, just being like willing to collaborate and um, share and add value to like other teams, even if it's not like a direct benefit, you know, and I love that. And it's been really cool getting to know Megan a lot. And it's funny because her and I are similar in some ways and like extreme opposites in others. And so um, I'm excited about some of the things that we've been talking about doing together and with different push groups and things like that. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to share a little bit about my story and just about like how I got started and what I think are some of the key like difference makers as to why I'm still here and like what's worked for me. So um, I'm not going to go into the whole background story of like how I got started as a coach and all that because like we like to hear those things, but it's team call night. So you guys want to actually like, I want you guys to like walk away with something um, other than just my story, but who on this call, and I told Megan this before, but I like, like when I'm speaking, I like to get a little bit of like feedback and interaction from you guys. So don't be afraid to unmute yourself. Um, so like who on this call has ever like felt discouraged by other people succeeding quickly in the business? Like either raise your hand or say yes or yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so sometimes like, at, like when we sign up as a coach and our coach tells us to like go follow all these top coaches and to follow these people and we see all these people that are like, um, you know, adding coaches and they have like, it's like you want to block their page because they have like five new diamond advancements on Thursdays, like every week. And you're like, what the heck? How is this happening? How is this possible? And like, you can actually allow that to bring yourself down because you're comparing yourself to somebody else's journey. And even though like, we'll allow ourselves to do that 
with our business journey, but then on the same hand, we're sitting here telling our people that are in our challenge groups on their fitness journey, we're telling them not to do that comparison, right? We're telling them like, just because Amy lost five pounds doesn't like, you know, her body is different, yours is different. So our business journey is different. And I think that, um, I know for me, just to give you guys some background, when I signed up, I, I, I signed up because I wanted to do the business. Like I wasn't just signing up for the discount. Like I had, my initial goal was that I wanted to make like 50 or $60 a month. And I was calling it my guilt-free money. Like I wanted that little bit where either I could like get my nails done or I could buy those like little extra things that that like end up in your shopping cart at Target, you know, like that put you over budget always. And um, before that, my husband and I were living like less than paycheck to paycheck and like constantly getting into overdraft and stuff, which would make it even worse. And so those little splurges were just like made me so happy to be able to do without like putting us in the overdraft. So that was my initial goal was I just wanted to make like 50 or 60 bucks. And I guess like at that time of my journey, obviously like if that was my goal, then success club was not really my goal. Like when my, my upline coach is Scotty Hobbs mm -hmm. and um, he, on our getting started right call, I specifically remember him telling me what success club was. And I specifically remember telling him that I was not interested in it. Because like that goal did not match, like that activity of getting success club didn't match my goal of wanting to get 50 or $60. Like that was more work than I was willing to put in for what I wanted. Does that make sense? Um, so like the point of that is just for your own self and when you're helping your coaches, like the goals that you're giving them has to match what they're wanting out of this business. So I'm so glad now that I look back that even though my goal was so small, my coach didn't treat me any differently than somebody that had a big goal of like paying off their student loan or wanting to leave work or something. He still gave me the same amount of like coaching and mentorship and stuff. So <clears throat> just because I got started that way though, it did, it did take me six months to get Emerald, which like we didn't have challenge packs yet. I think maybe if there was challenge packs, maybe I would have gotten there a little quicker. But um, on my very, I had my very first coach on my first day. And then it took me that long to find another human being with a social security number and a credit card <laughs> that wanted to do this. And so you can you could imagine that I was definitely feeling a little discouraged and feeling a little like, I don't know if I'm going to, if this is going to work for me. I don't know. Like I see all these other people that are getting success club and I see all these other people that are, you know, signing up people and making more money than I am and, and those kind of things. But I never stopped doing the behaviors. I, and I, I think that, like, as I look back at how I got started as a coach, I'm really glad that my initial goal was so small because since it was so small, like, I didn't get discouraged by other people's journey or the fact that it took me that long to get to Emerald because, um, like, I was just looking at these small pieces, you know, it's like, um, I, you know, I keep on relating back to a fitness journey where, you know, if some, if you have somebody that wants to lose like 60 pounds, you can't look at that 60 pounds at once. Like you, you want to spoon, spoon feed it to them like a little bit at a time, like, okay, five pounds you lost this month. That's great. That's a great success. Um, so anyways, some of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about is kind of what the difference maker in my own head was when I made that shift of just wanting that little small goal and how long it took me just to get to Emerald and then kind of what the difference maker was between that and then it took me a year to get to Diamond and then a year to get to Star Diamond and the reason why I never got discouraged. So I learned 
I learned in some of the personal development stuff that I was doing that there's really three things in business, whether it's Beachbody or another network marketing or just any business in general, there's three things that you have to have. And it's time, it's money, and it's skill. So if you have all three, then great. But nobody usually has all three all at the same time. Like, usually you'll have one that's like, you'll do, like, you're really good at one, and maybe the other two you've got to work on. So for me, when I started as a coach, I didn't have Mikey yet, my three-year-old. Like, I didn't have any kids, and my husband was a working full-time as a police officer on a rotating schedule. So I had a ton of free time because, like, he would be on night shift, and I'd have the entire night to do nothing. So I had a choice of either continuing to work and learn how to do beach body or I could you know do what the other police wives were doing which was like watching sex in the city and housewives and stuff like that so I decided all right I've got the time so if I've got the time I can invest that and learn the skills and if I have the time and the skills then the money will come and I held on to that belief and you know, I would say that it paid off for sure because the money is there now too. <laughs> so now I have the time, the money, and the skill, and things are easier now than when I first started. But um, so that's um, that was one of the things that was definitely like a difference maker is that I invested in learning. And this is this is actually one of the things that Megan talked about on our call the other night was about implementation. And I think that there's like so many of like my own team and just people that I've met in general, just in Beachbody and different events and whatever that like people will invest in learning. People will spend thousands of dollars to go to these seminars, you know, with like, um, Shaleen and her smart success. And, um, I can't, Tony Robbins, like I have not even like been able to invest in Tony Robbins yet, but like people will spend all this money and, they, the skill is right there for them to grasp and get, but then they never implement it. So I, there's tons of free resources out there, and I had the time. I did not have the money, but I used my time to earn the skill, and because I invested in that and learned the skill, I got the money. So, um, and that's something that I continue like, if you keep on looking at those three things and kind of evaluating where you're at, on each level of those things, you can see which area needs more work. So like for me, sometimes, um, like just because I've improved in all three areas, now I need to see, all right, which one needs more work? So now I have the money and the time, so maybe I need to invest more in skill. So now that I have the money, I, maybe I could, maybe I should be doing Tony Robbins, I don't know. but. Um, those are just kind of the things that I was doing. Um, all right, some other notes that I wrote down. So it took me six months to Emerald and one year to Diamond. So want to know what the difference maker was between those two things? The one vital behavior that I was not doing, personal development. And pretty much every coach that I know, that's usually what it is. Yeah, <laughs> Megan too. I was... I thought that I was already a positive person and I just thought that that's all positive. That was all personal development was, was just like feel good books. Like you can do it. You deserve greatness and you know, that kind of stuff. And I'm like, I don't need that. You know, like I already am a pretty generally optimistic person, but there's so much more that you learn from personal development. And that's one thing I, I really like to tell people don't read personal development based on what's popular right now. Like, remember, um, maybe like a year ago, there was that one book that was so popular, You Are a Badass. Everybody was talking about it. Like, and it's a good book. I get it. But like, if, if you don't need somebody right now telling you that you're a badass and that, you know, you can overcome your fears, then don't read it. Like, if you need help leading your team, then go pick up John Maxwell's, you know, 15 laws of leadership. Like you can, and I, I've gotten caught in that too, where I'm just reading, um, like whatever book people are suggesting, you know, like girl code and girl boss and this and that. And it's like, you can only 
read so much like rah rah you can do it you're a badass stuff like before you just need to go out and do it like stop reading it and start acting it and start implementing it and write your own you're a badass book you know so that's like been a really big thing for me in my own personal development journey is really like self-evaluating to what I actually need right now. And that kind of goes into the skill thing too. You know, like if you are somebody that keeps on saying, I really need to start a blog, but I don't know how we'll pick up a book and read it and figure out how, or find, you know, a, a resource on that. And like, I think that when we, when we're talking about personal development, I think that people just think that it does have to be that. It just has to be leadership or, you know, mindset stuff. But it can be skill stuff, too. It can be how to influence people. It can be how to how to type stuff. And that was a really big difference maker for me. Instead of just reading this stuff to fluff up my to fluff myself up, like I needed to start learning things that I could actually do and like actually like physically start implementing. So um, that's my spiel for personal development. My very first personal development book that I finally said, all right, I'm going to do it, was John Maxwell, um, 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. So that's always one that I like to recommend to people because um, for somebody that wasn't like a reader necessarily, it was it was easy to get started with. And because of the way he breaks up the book into, you know, 15 chapters, one for each law, it made it very easy to share the journey. Like I made a YouTube video for each one and it was just an easy way for me to get started on a PD journey. So I always tell people about that one. Um, All right. So I signed up in May of 2011. And then I told you guys it took me that six months. I didn't start hitting success club until 2012. That was my first year from 2012 to 2013 was when I started getting SC5. So I, that was my first year. I was an SC5 all-star. And then, um, let's see. And then 2014 is when I started my SC10 journey, I guess. And I remember, like, I remember the conversation, like, clearly in my mind because it happened at leadership. It happened at my very first leadership retreat. and. At the end of my year that I became SC5 All-Star was the first year that I became elite and the first year and the year that I got to five star. And so I was talking to my coach, um, Scotty, and I was like, all right, so, you know, I'm starting to hit these benchmarks and stuff. So like, what's next? What do I need to start shooting for next? And he's like, all right, you know, I really think that you should up your bar to SC10. And I'm like, no, like I hit SC5 by the skin of my teeth every month. Like, it's not like I get to SC9, (laughs) you know, it's like, so how am I going to get SC10 and do it every month for 12 months in a row? Because at the time they didn't have legend yet. Um, And I'm really glad they didn't because if they did, I probably would have said, no, I'm just going to shoot for SC5 legend. But anyway, so he... he told me that and that was in September. And at the time I'm like, no, like I just wasn't really ready to commit to that and stuff. And then September, October and November, I was still like, no, it's, you know, it's just not going to happen. Cause I was kind of seeing like, well, maybe let's, let's just see if it happens. And obviously it didn't happen because you guys know success club doesn't just happen. Then in December, I actually did try. I'm like, all right, if I really put the effort in, like what would happen? And I got, I did sign up five people that December, but then I had a return. So I didn't actually get Success Club 10, but I should have if that girl didn't return her stupid challenge back. But no bitterness. <laughs> um, so then Janu- So then I proved to myself I could do it. And then January, I, I was like, all right, I'm going to go for it. And so those next two years, I worked on SC10. And um, that was like my big goal. I like I had it on my screensaver on my phone. I talked about it like on every team call. My team knew that that was my big goal. And I knew that that goal was going to get me like all the other goals that I wanted, like the income goal and like how many coaches I wanted to add and um, elite and stuff like that. So I think that like, obviously success club is important because it's a great benchmark to 
know that you are actually adding people and adding new people to your challenge groups and adding new people to your team and stuff like that. But the thing that I love about success club is that it's monthly. Like I have such a hard time at looking at a year, like a goal that takes a year. That's why elite is so hard because you have to, you have this full year to work on it and lock it in success club. You get 30 days. So it's like so much easier to like work on it, grasp it and, and do it. Whereas like something like elite where it's a full year long, like so many things could happen in these 12 months, you know? So I think that even though it took me a long time to get on track to starting to hit success club, I'm really glad that it was like such a smaller chunk to start digesting. And so anybody that's on this call tonight, like if you haven't been hitting success club, like I don't want you to feel bad or like, you know, you're at a disadvantage if you weren't like a success starter or something like that, because it took me almost, I would say that was like nine months before I started hitting success club. Was my coach annoyed at me? Probably. <laughs> I mean, you know, we all have goals and, you know, when you have a sponsor that sees your potential, they do get frustrated when they know that you're not doing it. But um, I would say the thing that kept me going and kept me engaged and made it so that I never gave up is even though I wasn't hitting the goals that Beachbody said should be my goals, I was hitting my own goals and my coach recognized me for that. And I think that that's what's really important. That's why I love that Beachbody did add in recognition to our vital behaviors and the vital process. Because, like, just because Beachbody says that Success Club is is the goal, it doesn't really mean that it is the goal for everybody, you know? Like, you can't just blanket that for everyone's process. So, like, I just stayed with it. I stuck with it. And I never felt like I was a failure because my definition, like, I defined my success early on. Like I said, my success was having that guilt-free money. It wasn't success club. So I never felt like I was failing. So if you ever feel like if you're comparing yourself to other coaches, that's what I would tell you to do. Remember what your definition of success is versus your definition of failure. And if you haven't set those definitions, you should. Like some of my coaches that get started with me I tell them, like, let's set a three-month goal, and I don't care if you sign up a single person in this business. I don't care if you sign up a single challenger, but I want your goal to be for three months to be consistent, to show up on every team call, to do your, you know, daily to-do list every day for three months, and if you do that, you're a success, you know, because then it takes the weight off of it. It takes the weight off of, oh my gosh, what about Emerald? And what about Success Club? And what about this? And what about, you know, my results from my fitness program? It takes that stress off. And, you know, like, do you guys ever feel that weight that comes off your shoulders once you do get Success Club and then it's easier to talk to people after you already have it locked in? It's, that's the same thing with like defining your success. Like if you don't have that weight of, oh, I have to hit all these marks, then you're probably going to end up hitting them anyways because you're not so bogged down with worrying about all these things. And as I look back at like my journey of getting started and stuff, like I think that that's why I never felt like I was failing, even though on the outside looking in, I was. But to me in my heart and in my own like mind, I wasn't because I was happy. I was doing my journey. I was telling people about it. I was inspiring people. Maybe it wasn't equating to a challenge pack or Shakeology HD, but people were telling me, thank you, Jen, for posting that. I needed that today. Thank you for sharing that recipe. I made it for my family and, you know, my kid finally ate broccoli today or whatever. You know, like those little successes are what fueled me and gave me the passion and belief that I was in fact helping people. So somebody like me, who's kind of a shy person, an introvert, someone that's not going out and like knocking on doors and calling my friends and going through my Rolodex, I wasn't doing those things. If Scotty told me to do those things, I probably would have said, this isn't the business for me, you know, but he made it okay <coughs> to just go at the pace that I wanted to go. 
And the last thing I wanted to share, um, there was this one story that I really, really loved at Leadership Retreat this year, and it was actually Chris, um, what's his last name, Megan, the cop? Chris Reed. Chris Reed. And he was talking about how his coach, oops, um, his coach that signed him up in the company is Jason Diebold. And he's, I don't know like what star diamond he is, but I know that he is like super successful and in the million club and all that. So he's like, I knew the highway that my coach was on and I was on the same highway. I knew the destination of this highway. It was up to me what speed I wanted to go. Do I want to go at the same speed as Jason? Do I want to get in the fast lane and go at that speed? Or do I want to stay over here in this lane and in my comfort zone? which is fine and go at this speed. Either way, I'm on the same road, I'm on the highway, I'm gonna get to that destination because I already saw that that's where this road takes me. So you can do that, you can go at the fast pace, you can go at your pace, or you can pull over and go no pace, or you can get off the highway altogether. Actually, he said it really funny. He's like, you can get off at Schittsville. <laughs> He's like, you can get off at the Schittsville exit and do nothing. And I just loved that. Like, I loved the visual of that because, you know, for somebody like me, I did get in the slow lane, but that's okay because the highway took me to the journey or it took me to the destination, the success that I wanted, you know? So, um, so that's pretty much what I wanted to share with you guys. Um, you know, like I was consistent. I stayed, like I stuck with it. I never felt like a failure and, um, and PD and I didn't get off at Shootsville. Thank you so much. And that's so true. It's like so funny because think how many people were maybe in your shoes or did the comparison or same thing. And they, they did, they just took the ex emergency exit and said, you know what, I'm not doing this or I'm going to like, it's taking too long. They wanted the instant gratification because that's the society we live in, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what people do. They get into this business and they just want that instant, you know, I've had coaches that get in for a year, they go diamond. And then they're like, I'm not making enough money. And I'm like, I can tell you what I made in my first year. And it was not a lot of money. <laughs> you know, it was not a lot of money. Mm -hmm. but I can tell you what I made in my second year. And it was a lot, lot more. I mean, and I took a different past and I'm a path and I'm definitely considered a slower grow. But when you compare it to other professions out there and what I did with, from first year to second year to now third year, it's crazy the growth, but I'm still a slow grow in this business, which is like kind of funny because it's like, is that really a slow grow? So you guys, do you have any questions for Jen? She'll take any questions you have. You can just unmute yourself or type them in. I don't know if you can see the comments, Jen. They said, thank you so much. This is just what I needed to hear. And I felt conviction about the PD. I love the call. Need to hear that. Well, we are super thankful to have had you. Oh wait, Brittany has raised her hand. All right, girlfriend here, let me unmute you. Oh, I just want to say thank you too because I was feeling like I wasn't hitting Success Club, and that really just brightened my day. I needed to hear that too, so thank you, Jennifer. You're welcome. Okay, and then Sarah said thank you. All right, guys, awesome. I really liked hearing that it wasn't about selling challenge packs, it's all about helping people. Yes, that is so true, and that's really what they drove home at leadership to us guys. So that was like a huge, huge that's like basically all we heard the entire time, <laughs> right? So thank you so much, much for your that. time, Jen, and um, people in the Diamond Dash to reach for the stars training. You guys will be seeing more of her, and but thanks for your time, and we're going to do our recognition now. All righty. Thanks for having me. And if you guys think of anything after, I know sometimes when I'm on calls, like I'll get off and I'm like, man, I wish I would have said. Yeah, or, I mean, this hit right at home. I do feel so overwhelmed at times. Thank you, Jennifer. 
You're welcome, guys. All right. Well, have a good night. And if you think of anything, feel free to message me. And other than that, I'll see you guys later. All right. Thanks. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Okay, guys. I'm going to do recognition real quick. And then we will be done. Okay. So this is for month of October um, for Success Club. Michelle Ackley, she's on here, right? I saw her somewhere. You're on here, aren't you? I saw you. She's on here. I saw her somewhere. And Lindsay Higginbotham for volume. I don't even think she's in Fit Tribe. Is she? Who is, who's her coach? Anybody know? Okay, the tapers on her. Um, Whitney, sixteen oh five volume. So, and for this past week, recognition is we have. So our team is about get we're like this close to 500 coaches we're like so close which is awesome and so this is where we're at success club five we have Sarah McMillan Kay Galliano success club eight Kristen Blackburn success club or at SC5 and at SC4 we have me Rachel Ackley like brand new brand new coach Danny Malin, Shana Allen, Whitney Pugh, Ashley Lachlan, Lachlan, Jess Clopton. And with everybody that needs to help, two more people. We have Kylie Fox, Sheena Fisher, Cassie Talley. Pardon me if I get your name wrong. Megan Graham, Lindsay Higginbotham, Nikita Shields, Tracy Jenkins, Glenda Medina, Amanda Rosenbaum, Sherry Boyles, Ronnie Webster, Lauren Namor. Namor. Abigail Saul, Natasha Nada, Destiny, I'm not even going to do your name because you know how that goes, Francie, Sky, Ronnie, Sarah Kaminsky, and Sarah Granger. And for volume, this was a little bit, we didn't have it for out of almost 500 coaches, we had we only seven people on the board, but 500 club, which means volume over 500 for this week, we have Rancy Doherty, 400, we have Sarah Kaminsky, Sarah McMillan, and for 250 and above, we have Ronnie Stringer, Natasha Nadech, Katie Mazaris, and Katie Galliano. So that's all I have for you. For my coaches, don't forget, we have a sneak peek, soft start to Sunday, starting on Monday, three days, and we also have a live virtual cocktail party, which Jen Greenberg will be hosting. That's for, um, and I have the dates in my pin post. So pin post is updated up until January. So you guys know that. And otherwise, I will see you guys next week. We have Katie Flynn Crumb coming on from the Beatnik Dynasty. She's doing a home call on social media. Guys, she knows her stuff. She has had a post on her personal Facebook go viral to 17,000. 17,000 people, I'm pretty sure it went to. It's 17,000 likes. So if you want to know something, definitely follow you will definitely want to tune into that call. Okay. All right. And it was about Nemo and Dory. So if you want to learn something, she's like super genuine, super sweetheart. And I just, she's a great person. And um, you won't get a call from her be on the bombshell dynasty. So I'm super excited to have her on our call. She's an elite coach and she's very successful and very extremely humble. So definitely be sure to tune in. Okay. It was great to see you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye.